Hi everybody, it's Miss Eckert again. Yesterday we started reading a, an expository nonfiction book, which is a book that gives real, true factual information about a topic. Our topic yesterday that we started to learn about was rainforest frogs. Think about what we learned yesterday and see if you can remember some things that you, can re you, you learned about rainforest frogs. I remember one thing I learned is that rainforest frogs are very colorful. They come in a variety of, thing, of colors, just like my top today. I remember another thing that I learned was that they can be in different sizes and that they lay eggs without shells and their habitat is almost always someplace moist or wet, like the rainforest. Here's a chart we made about our wonderings from yesterday. We wondered if the rainforest were like what the if rainforest frogs were like pond frogs. We wondered why rainforest frogs were so colorful. We wondered where where the tiny frogs lived. We wondered why the eggs didn't have shells. Also, which part of the rainforest did the frogs live in? The canopy, the understory, or the floor? And if the frogs needed such a why frogs needed such a wet place to live. And lastly, we wondered how can a frog swallow a rat or a mouse? Remember when we wonder and ask questions, it helps us pay more attention to the story and what the author's trying to write and say and teach us. It helps us keep more actively involved in the story, thinking about whether our wonderings or questions are answered as we go along. And then it gives us some curiosity as to what other things we could ask as we read. Today we're going to continue wondering and questioning, but I also wanted to go back to yesterday's wonderings and remind ourselves what things we answer, got answered from the text yesterday. We did find that rainforest frogs were similar to pond frogs in some ways and different in others. One similarity was that they both liked wet places to live. A difference was they're often different colors, rainforest frogs being very colorful and pond frogs being brown, mainly brown or green. We wondered why they were so colorful. The author didn't talk about why the skin is colorful. Maybe, maybe uh, she'll address that today. We talked about where they live what part of the rainforest they lived, and the author did answer the question that most of the rainforest frogs lived in the canopy or the understory, which were the top and the middle layers of the forest, some of them living on the floor, but most of them living above. We wondered why the eggs didn't have shells. The author didn't address that yet. And we wondered why they needed such a wet place to live. We haven't really found out the answer to that yet either, so maybe in today's reading we will. And how could a frog swallow a rat or a mouse? That seems kind of impossible for such a small animal to eat such a big thing. I'm really curious to see whether the author intro introduces that information today. So today I'm going to just pick up where we left off yesterday when the, the author talked about them swallowing rats or, sm or small mice. In the section that I'm going to read today first, it's going to tell how the colors of the horned frogs keep them from um, being eaten or attacked by predators. Remember, predators are animals that hunt other animals, usually to eat them. You can see a picture of the horned frogs right here. A disguise is a way to hide something, what something really is. 
It says the disguise of the horned frog also protects them from becoming food for larger animals. Many small frogs protect themselves by hiding. Some have brown patterns that disguise them on tree trunks or among dead leaves. This disguise kind of looks like a camouflage to me. And here are some other ones that seemed disguised or camouflaged. Glass frogs are hard to see on green leaves. Much of their skin has no color at all. It is sometimes hard to see where the glass frog ends and the leaf begins. A few rainforest frogs have special way to avoid predators. They have big feet with webbing between the toes. Some also have flaps of skins on the sides of their bodies. To escape, the frog jumps in the air and spreads out its feet like this. The webbing and flaps act like wings and slow the frog's fall as it glides gently downward. When the frog reaches another tree, it can hang on with just one giant toe pad until it can grab with its foot. What are you wondering about now that we've read this part of the book? Some third graders wonder what helps the frog's toe pad stick. Remember the author said it can hang on by its toe pad until it can reach its other foot up. Other wonders were, what animals eat the frogs? So who are they hiding from? We want to know if the author will answer what predators there are for frogs. Let's see if the author answers that in the next section of the book. We're going to read about an unusual rainforest frog on this page called the poison dart frog. Some of you may have heard about this frog already. Poison dart frogs don't need to hide or escape. They hop fearlessly about on the forest floor during the day. Their bright colors warn predators. Don't touch me. Only a few animals can eat them because their skin contains bitter tasting chemicals. Some of these chemicals are very poisonous. Poisonous can mean deadly. Native hunters in Colombia roll the tips of their blowgun darts onto the skin of certain poison dart frogs. The poison will last for about a year. The hunters use it to kill game. Game are wild animals that they can eat but they must be very careful. The skin of one small frog can contain enough poison to kill more than a hundred people. Based on what you just heard, what are you wondering now? Let's add to our wondering chart. I was really interested, and I've heard other third graders be interested in why, how the poison um, kills the, the predators from the poison dart frog. And how does a blowgun dart work? It talked about the hunters using blowgun darts with poison on the tips. Now we're going to move on. And the last part of the book, it's going to tell about how scientists have found ways to use the poison of the poison dart frog. A few species of poison dart frogs don't leave their tadpoles to find food on their own. The female puts each of her tadpoles into a different puddle. 
Every few days, she goes back to each puddle and lays infertile eggs that won't hatch eggs to feed her tadpoles. You can see some pictures of the infertile eggs that she's laying inside where the tadpole is right there. The chemicals in poison frog, poison dart frog skin are very interesting to scientists. Like other poisons, they can be useful as medicine in small doses. Doses are when you take a little bit of medicine at a time. Like when you're sick, you have a small dose of medicine maybe to make you feel better. One chemical from poison dart frog skin is a more powerful painkiller than morphine. Others could be used as heart attack medicines. Let's think about what we learned in this section of the text. And record some more wonders. Students have wondered, does this mean that the tadpoles eat frog eggs? Remember in this section of the book we talked the the writer talked about how the mother frog would put tad um, infertile eggs in to feed the tadpoles. And how does poison from the frog skin turn into helpful medicine? It kills some. How can it help others? Let's see if we've answered any of the questions that we had today. Were any of the things that we wondered about explained in today's reading? Let's go back to our chart. The first wonder was, we wondered what helps the frog's toe pad stick. So far, we haven't found out why the toe pad sticks to the leaves and the surfaces. What animals eat the frogs? It hasn't said specifically what animals eat the frogs, but I do remember seeing a picture of some birds on this page. Perhaps they're the ones that eat the frogs. We wondered if the poison how the poison kills the predators. So far, the, the author hasn't specifically told how the poison works in their bodies and makes them die or sick, but perhaps we'll find that out. Maybe there's some other ways we can find out about how poison dart frogs work. And how does a blowgun dart work? We don't really know that yet either. One question was, does this mean that the tadpoles eat frog eggs? The author did answer that. That she laid eggs in the same puddles as the tadpoles, and the tadpoles could use the infertile eggs as food. And another question was, how does poison from the frog skin turn into helpful medicine? We don't know how scientists have done that yet, but that sure would be interesting to find out. During your independent reading time today, or IDR, I would like you to read for about 10, 20 to 25 minutes and about a nonfiction topic of your choice. It could be an animal, it could be a country, and remember as you read, you're gonna be paying attention to what you wonder at the beginning of the book in the middle of the book and towards the end of the book and use your reading time to see if you can find answers to your questions and your wonders. Now would be a great time for you to grab a pencil, some paper, and a nonfiction book of your choice. <laughs> the nonfiction book I chose is because I have only one stuffed animal. 
I got this stuffed animal, koala bear, when I was a baby, and as I was looking at him placed in my front window, it reminded me that I don't really know anything about koala bears, so for my nonfiction book, I chose a book about koalas that I had in my basement bookshelf. It's called A Koala is Not a Bear. Today, while I read, I'm going to write down some wonderings. Here's a great way to organize your writing as you read today as well. On your piece of paper, start by writing the title of the book or the article that you're going to use, the author, and then the topic. Of course, my topic today is koala bears. The topic of the book we've read is about rainforest frogs. Then, we're going to take some time today to write about what we wonder before we begin reading. Then, we're going to stop and jot some wonderings along the way as we read. Once we finish, we're going to check to see if any of our, any of our wonderings were answered. I've done a little example. My title is a koala is not a bear. The authors you can find on the inside cover usually. Hanelor Sotzek and Bobby Kalman. I recorded their names on the next line here. And the topic is koalas. I wrote my first wondering on the next line. I wonder if koalas live in a place near us besides the zoo. And what do koalas eat? Those are two questions I had before I began the book, but I'm sure I'll think, think of some other wonderings as I read the book and stop and jot them down along the way. Please enjoy your book today. Remember to stop and jot your wonderings along the way. Tomorrow we'll read and finish Flashy Fantastic Rainforest Frogs and see what other wonderings we can come up with as we read our books. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and enjoy your nonfiction book. See ya.